Hey folks, so today is a total asynchronous day. You don't have live Gallagher, you just have me digital Gallagher. Eh, I'm better than that guy anyway. Now, we're going to take a look at the values of the six trigonometric functions. This is day one of two with this, because we're going to get a bit more in depth with it tomorrow, or rather Thursday. But this is just to make sure that everything is coming together, you remember the values of the six trigonometric functions, and if you don't, we brush the dust off and make you remember them. All the work today is going to be on delta math. So, hey, you're already here watching this video. Reason being, that way you know you're right or you know you're wrong before you walk away from this. We're going to take a look at something you've seen before with the values of the six trig functions in their quadrants. Then we're going to take a look at, well, the values of the six trig functions regardless of how to find them and how to do it when you're given either a ratio or a point. Without any further ado, let's get into it. So before we begin, it helps to just review the six trig functions. You've seen these before, I know you have, but a nice little refresher never hurts. So these ones you have seen before, and you might remember them with the acronym SOHCAHTOA. I mean, they're just the same thing over here. We have just switched them from the opposite adjacent hypotenuse to our vertical You've seen before, we've just switched them from opposite adjacent and hypotenuse to vertical, radius, horizontal, and all that. We also have our U, V, and R coordinate system. Now, the other ones. These are what's known as the reciprocal trig functions. The reciprocal trig functions are just the trig functions you know and love, but flipped. So instead of opposite and adjacent, it's adjacent and opposite for tangent and cotangent. Instead of adjacent over hypotenuse, it's hypotenuse over adjacent for cosine and secant. And instead of opposite over hypotenuse, it's hypotenuse over opposite for cosecant and sine. Now notice, whenever you are referring to these, these pairs, these reciprocal pairs, one of them has a co and the other doesn't. It's tangent and cotangent. Or it's cosine and secant. Or it's sine and cosecant. The co is only there once. And these are also the reciprocal trig functions. They're just listed out again in our UV coordinate system and using the horizontal, vertical, and the radius ideas. So you've seen all this before, but we're just going to find these values to just make sure that you still got it. Now, it's really, really helpful to use this acronym. All students take calculus to just remember the signs in each one of the different quadrants. Remember, this is quadrant one. This is quadrant two. We use Roman numerals for these. And you thought when you learned Roman numerals, they would never tell you anything important. This is quadrant three. This is quadrant four. And just like the other trig stuff we're seeing, they're going in a counterclockwise direction. If you're wondering why counterclockwise, blame Babylon and the movement of the stars in the northern hemisphere. Now, all this means all students take calculus. It tells you what, which one of the original three trig functions are positive in which quadrant. In this first quadrant, all of them are. You have sine, cosine, and tangent are all positive in that quadrant. In the second one, only sine is positive. You have a negative cosine and a negative tangent. Now, down here, only tangent is positive. You have a negative sine, a negative cosine, and a positive tangent. And that's because tangent is equal to sine over cosine, so the two negatives cancel each other out. Over here, only cosine is positive. So you have a negative sine, you have a positive cosine, and you have a negative tangent. It's just really helpful to keep an eye on what's what here, so that way you're good to go. You know what's happening.
And now this is how it's going to appear on Delta map. In which quadrant does theta lie if the following statements are true? Cosine of theta is greater than zero, and cosecant of theta is less than zero. So that just means that this is positive, and that's negative. Now it helps to remember cosecant. What is cosecant? Well, cosecant, it already has the co in it, so it can't be cosine, so it's one over sine of theta. So, I know if I'm looking at these in my quadrant, ooh, I can shade nicely here. I know cos cosine is greater than zero in these quadrants. That's quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. Now, I also know that because Let's do blue. Why not? Because the sine of cosecant relies on sine, I just need to keep in mind where sine is, pop is negative. And sine is negative in these two quadrants. Now, where is the only one where they all overlap? It's here in quadrant four. So, how you answer this in delta math is you just Head on over to Delta Map, click Quadrant 4, submit answer. Yes, I'm right. And hey, we're right. And they give you all student state calculus as well. Now, we're going to find the exact values, no decimals, of the six trig functions of 45 degrees. For our purposes today, we're going to be dealing with just exact values. At no point should you be finding a decimal answer. Some of the decimal answers are going to be really nice, like a half. Some are going to be awful looking, and that's our job to avoid them. It helps just start off with a graph. This is 45 degrees. So I want to find the exact values of these six trig functions at 45 degrees. So you might notice that we have absolutely zero idea about any coordinate pairs here. That's all right. Because this is at 45 degrees, I can pick a convenient coordinate pair here and use it to find everything else. Uh, let's say that this is a length of 1, and that's a length of 1. I can say that this is at the 1, 1, because it's at 45 degrees from the origin, or from standard position, rather. So anything that it's the same would appear here. I can make this 2, 2, 3, 3, regardless. Now, I need to find my hypotenuse, my radius. And to do that, well, 1 squared plus 1 squared equals r squared. Well, that's just going to end up with 2 equals r squared. r is equal to radical 2. So I'm going to plug radical 2 in. So now I need to do sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, instead of theta, let's put 45. You can put the parentheses or not. The one thing that you must put, must, 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 are the degree symbols as you're writing this. If you don't put the degree symbols, you mean it's radians, and we are not dealing with radians yet. Well, I need cosecant of 45 degrees. I need secant of 45 degrees, and I need cotangent of 45 degrees. I like to write it like this because you'll see that I have my reciprocals right across from each other, and that's going to be helpful in a second. Now, if you want, we can label this. This is going to be my u, this is going to be my v, this is going to be my r. I know that sine of 45 is equal to v over r, so that means that sine of 45 is going to be 1 over radical 2. I know cosine of 45 degrees is equal to u over r, so in this case, because it's 45 degrees, it also happens to be like that. Yay! I know tangent is equal to v over u, so it's 1 over 1 happens to equal 1. And you'll actually notice that even if we picked different values for this, we would still wind up with these simplified ratios. Now, here's why I write these things like this. Because cosecant is reciprocal to sine, I don't have to find everything all over again. I just need to take 
this and flip it for cosecant. So instead of 1 over radical 2, I have radical 2 over 1. Well, that's just radical 2. I got cut off there. Which means instead of 1 over radical 2 here, it's also equals radical 2. And instead of 1 over 1 here, it's 1 over 1, so it's 1. Awesome. Now let's see how we would do this if we're given a coordinate pair. Find the six trig values of theta. If theta terminates in quadrant 3 and sine of theta is equal to negative 2 over 3. First things first, draw it out. So I got quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4. It terminates in quadrant 3, so that means I'm going to draw it out to here. Let's just draw a point. And cool. Now I, eh, let's make our triangle. And I know that my theta is nestled here. Now technically theta is this, but I'm using the reference angle and making a right triangle problem. Now here's the great thing. I'm told that sine of theta is equal to negative 2 over 3. Well, I know that sine is going to be my opposite here of theta, so that means this is going to be 2. I know 3 has to be my hypotenuse, so this is going to be 3. And then one of them has to be negative. Well, here it's going to be this, the negative 2. This is always going to be positive. My radius is always going to be positive. Now, how do I find the x value? Because I'm going to need that to find the remaining six trig functions. Well, I just set up the Pythagorean theorem. a squared, b squared, c squared. Important thing to keep in mind, these can be u plus v squared, or they can be v and u both squared. But this one is always going to be r has to be. That's just how the Pythagorean theorem works. So I'm going to say a squared plus negative 2 squared is equal to 3 squared. a squared equals 4, uh, a squared plus 4 equals 9, a squared equals 5, a equals radical 5. Now it says to find the values. I'm going to leave this radical 5 like that. I'm not going to find any decimal approximation. In that way, I'm finding the exact values, considering I won't round at all. And from here on out, finding the six values is easy peasy. Let's set it up. Awesome. So we've set it up. Let's get a bit more room going on here. And we just want to the cool thing is, they told us sine already. Sine is just negative 2 over 3. They told us right up here. Well, in that way I can find cosecant by just negative 3 over 2. It's just the reciprocal, remember? So cosine is going to be my adjacent, so it's going to be my radical 5 over 3. You might think we're done there. We're not. We're in the third quadrant, where the only thing positive is tangent. So that means I need to make this a negative. It doesn't matter if I put the negative with the radical 5, or you put it out front like this. I like to put them out front like that. Well, that means that secant is also negative 3 over radical 5. Awesome. Now let's take a look at tangent. So tangent is just going to be my v over u, or my opposite over my adjacent. So it's going to be my, oh, that should be negative. So it's just going to be my negative 2 over negative 5. And might be saying, but wait a second, you said that tangent's positive here. It is. These two negatives will cancel out. So you can rewrite this as 2 over radical 5, which means cotangent is just radical 5 over 2. And we found it. We're good to go. Let's take a look at this one. So this is how it's going to appear on delta. If theta is an angle in standard position and its terminal side passes through the point negative 4 comma negative 9, find the exact value of tangent of theta in simplest radical form. And you might be thinking, this looks nothing like what we had before. This doesn't have sine is equal to something. And I might be saying, you might be right. 
But let's plot the point and see how similar it looks. So negative 4, negative 9. Cool. That's our terminal ray. So by this point, you should be getting used to the fact that we're drawing out a right triangle. Hey, look, we got two sides of a right triangle. They're both the legs, so I'm going to do negative 9 squared plus negative 4 squared equals r squared. Uh, 81 plus 16, 97, square root of 97 equals r. That's going to go here. Your Pythagorean theorem should back you up here. This should be positive because you know the radius also has to be positive. Now, we want to find the exact value of tangent in simplest radical form. Okay. Well, I know that we're in the third quadrant, so this has to be positive. I know that I have negative 9 over negative 4, which is going to be 9 over 4. You might be thinking, I didn't use the radical 97. Yeah, you didn't, because tangent didn't call for it. But if this didn't say tangent, if it said sine or cosine or anything like that, or secant or cosecant, then you would have to use the radical. Now, let's take a look at this one. Again, from delta, we got an angle in the standard position. Its terminal side passes through the point 4, 9. They like 4 and 9. I don't know why. So 4, 9. We're in the first quadrant, so everything's going to be positive. Make your right triangle, so that's 9. So that's 4. Well, we got to find stuff again. Uh, we're going to do 4 squared plus 9 squared equals r squared. In the previous one, we just did the same thing. So I'm going to skip those steps. It's going to be radical 97 again. Now, we're asked to find here secant. Well, we know secant is equal to 1 over cosine. So if you want, you can find cosine and go from there. So cosine is going to be 9 over, oh, excuse me, cosine is going to be 4. Cosine of theta is equal to 4 over radical 97. So that means that secant of theta is equal to radical 97 over 4. And let's see how you plug that into delta math, because I don't. if you plug something in and make a mistake, you could easily accidentally plug this in. And these two are not the same thing. Let's take a look at how to plug that into delta. Radical 97 over 4, what we're going to need to do is plug it in. So you can go over here to your answers. It helps to hit slash and make the fraction first. Put radical 97 over 4. Notice the radical is just in the numerator. That is incredibly important. So the answer, and we got it right. Yay! Make sure that the radical is just in the numerator. For instance, had you typed in radical first and then the fraction, delta math would have automatically put the entire fraction inside the radical. And even if you did shenanigans to try to make the new denominator makes sense, it's asking simplest radical form. Awesome. So we have just seen how to do a lot of this stuff, and you're good to go with it. You might be confused about it. That's perfectly fine. You're able to look at the helpful Delta Math videos, and I also put a couple of links on our Google Classroom page where if the Delta Math doesn't help you out, you can check them out, and hopefully that'll help. Now, you're going to be doing four Delta Math problem sets. Each one of those have five problems. You're doing a total of 20 before you freak out. Remember, we got through these with just Pythagorean theorem and diagrams. So you'll be able to do the exact same. First one, signs of all trig functions. So you, I would really recommend a diagram there. Then trig from a point, really recommend you know, a diagram there. Uh, find trig given a ratio for the last two. Again, I'd really recommend a diagram. So after that, you're just going to complete the summary that's right there. You don't have a reading survey for today because next class we're going to continue with the same section. You're not reading anything new. Have a great day, folks. Stay safe, and I will talk at you on Thursday.